primary purpose for me in a conference and what I want to see is the impact that it has on the young person. That student walking away empowered to know that they can improve and change something. The secondary purpose for a conference is to inform instruction. I use the conferring form in class with my students when they're doing independent work. What I do is I go to each student one by one and I ask them a question related to the uh, skill that they are learning. And I take notes depending on you know what they say to see if they really master you know the skill. And then at the end of the day, or when I'm going to do my lesson plan, I look at it and, and it informs my practice. It lets me know if the students did get the lesson, if they need more review. I think those conferences have affected like, the way I write and the quality of my writing because um, when she sits down and talks to me, it's like she cares about me. So she's like, all right, you need to get this done in order for you to improve it, whether it's on that draft or next time um, I'm writing something new. But yeah, that, that's really helpful, because if not, then it would just stay the same and there'll be no improvement. When I'm with them on one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes we have like this teaching moment. You know, if I discover that maybe they misunderstood a lesson or, or an activity, so I use that time to make it more clear for, to them. I use the student feedback form to inform both my practice and to help the students improve on their classroom grades. When I'm constructing the feedback tool and I notice that a student is having an issue, then I might go and have a conference with that student and address that issue one-on-one. -on -one. So before I have people share out, can someone refresh my memory? What is a main idea? If I notice that a lot of students are having the same issue, then I'll know that I might need to do some reteaching. What we typically do is we first ask the student to describe the task, just to get an idea of if they know what, was it, what the expectation was. After that, then we, we tell them their strengths. We always start from a place of strength. Um, and then we go to ways to improve the task. So it's always from a growth mindset. Um, um, you did well, but this is how you can improve and get your grade higher. The use of a rubric is beneficial because it gives you a starting point and it gives you an unbiased direction to move in with the assignment and the, the classwork. The one thing I will easily fix is this paragraph. Okay, that's all right. The concluding paragraph? Is, yeah. The concluding paragraph. Okay. And how would you fix it? Um, into a form, into a formal term. Yeah. If it's one to one, though, there's nobody judging you from the background. It's just you and the teacher, so you can actually get some proper information and you can actually make corrections on yourself instead of actually trying to look good in front of other people. There's no judging in the background. Oh, I don't need to hear all of that. People are like, oh, you wrong, ha, ha, ha. Don't need to hear all of that. It's all cool. It's just me and a teacher, just pure learning, straight. Since we started using the feedback tool in the rubrics, I think across the board, there's an expectation that you're going to do more than one draft of an essay and that there is a built-in revision process. On the rubric, there's a, there's a next steps column. And so I think that the students are actually taking their next steps um, and applying it with the feedback that we give them to produce stronger writing and um, classwork. They're producing higher quality writing and they're referring more to the Common Core rubrics. How this is gonna work is you guys are gonna give me your work for that day. So for today, you're gonna give me your work along with this grade sheet in the clear folder. Okay, and then I'm gonna, me or Paula are gonna grade your work for academic behavior, for demonstration of learning, participation, and we'll write feedback on how you did that day. And then we'll give it back to you the next day. 
in the beginning, she didn't, never used to give us the feedback paper, so I didn't actually know how I was doing, so I was just assuming I was doing good, so I was like being complacent with my work. But now that I know, like, I'm not being, getting fours every day, I'm able to improve myself. To help students see that this is about their learning, um, we use, uh, I use the same language from the skills that we're learning in the classroom on their uh, chart. So instead of saying like good work or great job, I'll say like nice connection to controlling idea or great use of a quoting technique. Very like specific feedback so they know that's a skill that they need to work on. If they see this every day, they know, okay, this is something I, I, I should improve on. So for me, um, it's important so that I know to you know, reteach a skill or work with that individual student the next day on that particular like skill or strategy. So a lot of them are strugglers, they've been ignored, they've been told they are not worth working with because they're not in school, etc. And so trying to break the idea in their heads that they're stupid, that they can't do it, that after failing a region five times, they should go back and do it again. That's a whole mindset shift that needs to happen and we try to do that from the time a student comes to us. But I think that feedback is a big part of that. It's us saying, this is where you're at and this is, we believe that you can get better and this is how you can do that.